Flores studio. Today, we're going to be doing something that is one of my favorite things. We're gonna be creating our winter woodland centerpiece with a little bit of elegance added to it. <laughs> I wanted to create this tablescape for everybody to see how you can do it on a very tight budget. I actually didn't purchase anything. Granted, I do own a flower shop and I have a lot of rental items and candles, etc. But all of the things I'm using today are things that you can go out and buy locally or forage locally or any of the above. So let's get started. So whether you're entertaining a small group of people, whether you're just creating a romantic dinner for you and your loved one, or having your friends over, it's actually something I really, really love. So I wanna go over some items that we'll be using today in our winter woodland tablescape. So you'll be needing some gold spray paint or you can use silver, or you can just use twigs if you don't want to paint them gold, but uh, you'll need a couple little twigs. Some autumn foliage would be really pretty. I really like this uh, oak because it's got a gold tint to it. Some beautiful magnolia. In Ohio, I can just go pick these from a local tree, or these in particular, I just go to my local tree guy and he's got a whole yard full of beautiful greens. Some white pine. I'm going for some different textures here. I love the white pine because it's so wispy and beautiful. And some sheet moss or any kind of moss. Or if you don't have any moss available to you, you can take a green piece of fabric or something that would kind of mimic moss and put that underneath as like a little table runner on top of your tablecloth. Some pine cones. I think we'll probably be using about eight or nine of these. We'll be using two of these Japanese pin frogs to put the branches in. And for the table settings, you'll need a nice plate, some fabric for a napkin and ribbon and a dried orange slice. And the dried orange slices are really easy to make at home. A nice simple charger or placemat. Some silverware, in this case I used gold some tumblers for your wine and maybe another glass for some water. And then we use six of these Ikea candle holders and we use three of these marble candle holders. And I believe we had six also of these cute little mercury glass votives with tea lights inside. And if you have someone that, or if you are good at lettering, some little name tags are really cute. These are very simple and easy to make. And that's all we'll be using today, and a lighter. I just had this pine table that I used to meet with my clients and I cleared off all my paperwork and computer and we're going to use that today. And I went to my local paint store and bought just a nice canvas um, drop cloth. So we're gonna be using that as our tablecloth. I didn't cut it, I didn't hem it, I just kind of tucked under the excess and I used a steamer, it still has a little bit of it uh, still has some creases in it, but you can wash it first and dry it and then steam it. It acts as a nice durable tablecloth. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is add my table runner. And since our theme today is kind of a winter woodland theme, we're going to use moss. So if you live in the Pacific Northwest, actually, even if you live, if you live anywhere, except maybe Florida or the South or maybe Arizona, okay, like anywhere North of Tennessee, <laughs> There's going to be moss. Um, so you can go out and forage for some moss, or um, you can also buy it from a wholesaler or online. This is leftover moss, but I have foraged for it before, so I'm kind of cheating, but not really. So I'm just gonna start with that runner of moss, and it is really messy, but we will take care of that. Think about what you have and what theme that you want to come up with. This is a holiday theme, and within that holiday theme, I thought, well, what would be good that wouldn't cost much money that everybody could do? Um, and I came up with Winter Woodland. So some of this moss will probably get shifted around as we put the candles on, but this is the general start. It's like a little moss island. <laughs> this is a, kind of dry, but it's still gonna work. So now that we have our moss runner on, I have an assortment of candles, um, some of which, again, are these are all items that could be purchased online, and some nice classic white taper candles, and some little votives, and we're gonna place those. 
So when I do the candle placement, I just, I like to kind of have things be asymmetrical and not in a line and kind of just look like someone naturally threw them on there. So I'm just gonna separate some of the tapers, kind of put some short with the tall. I might do a little cluster here. So kind of weaving it in and out of the moss. Yeah, I think that looks good. And then we're gonna add these marble candlestick holders that I have. I'm just going with like a really simple, beautiful look today and kind of dotting these in between. Then I think we're going to add the votives. And for the votives, I just buy these little pre-filled tea lights, which are really great because then when these are burnt down, there is not wax in the inside, which if you've dealt with candles, you know that wax is not super fun to deal with. So we're just going to kind of dot those around. I hope I'm making sense by saying that. So we'll add our last few votives kind of nestled in here. Something good to think about too is you don't want to set anything on fire. So just be conscientious when you're placing things that there is not a fire hazard. I know it seems crazy to say, but it's been known to happen a time or two. So now we have our candles set, which they might get moved again. And I just want to let all of you know that I did part of this setup ahead of time, but I wanted to really just build this with you and show you my process. So it, I didn't fully come up with an idea. So we're really doing that together today. So I have an assortment of greens that we're going to be using. A great resource for getting greens this time of year is your local tree company because they're cleaning up trees and we got some really beautiful stuff from them that I'll show you. I'm undecided on whether I'm going to use these branches, but we're gonna give it a whirl and see what it looks like. So I have these Japanese frogs, nice, heavy, durable uh, metal pins, frog pins that we're going to lay on the table and so we'll see if these work. I just think the branches would add ni a nice little bit of height. I'm just gonna score the bottom because these are not fresh branches. So just gonna score the bottom, do a little X and see if that helps hold it in. Oh, perfect. Okay, so yeah, that's great. <clears throat> I see this could be a problem here with this candle, but I think otherwise we're in pretty good shape. And I have an assortment of branches. We sprayed gold, if you just have some gold spray paint. That one went in really nicely, but it does kind of seem to be competing with this candle. So I'm actually just gonna move the candle over here. Not sure about this branch here. I can see that being a problem. So these little guys, I think I'll just kind of put in down at the bottom here. These branches are nice too, because it's not going to impede on the view you want to see the beautiful faces of your guests. So that's the whole point. So awesome. I think next we're going to start with our foliage. So I have this beautiful oak again, like it's nice to have an assortment of things to choose from, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use all of it. So I'm going to use this beautiful oak and, ah, oh, seriously, that is so amazing. Isn't it? Um, I think it's called Indumentum, and it's just, just so gorgeous on the back of this Southern Magnolia. So we're gonna use some of that too. Let's start with the Southern Magnolia as our base, since it's kind of a little bit heavier and weightier, we'll use that at the bottom. To make appointments. Damn What's wrong with your leg? So I'm not 100% sure, again, I'm building this as we go. This is a very spontaneous, fun process that we're doing together. You're having fun, right? I am. So, but we have this gorgeous magnolia. So I'm just kind of trying to figure out how to incorporate it in here because I want to see, I really want to see the, the, the back of this because it's so gorgeous. I don't want to just see the top. We're going to keep it fairly simple today. You know, it's tempting to want to go overboard and all that fun stuff, but sometimes simplicity is best. So I don't want to leave this other side undone, even though you guys are viewing it from that side and you kind of get the gist. You're going to want to work your way around the table and do the whole 
the whole thing because you're gonna have, if you're having guests on both sides. Some of the stuff, if, when you're foraging, you're going to come across things that are bug eaten or we find all kinds of interesting things. We have a praying mantis pod out there that will be hatching in the spring and then we found a caterpillar. So we kind of have this little zoo of things we found while foraging. It's kind of exciting for people that like bugs like me. All right, I think we have our runners started here. Be conscientious if you're going to have guests sitting at the end of your table, obviously you're not going to want to go all the way to the end with your runner. But in this situation, we're going to be setting this table for four guests. It's very important to think about also the textures of the, the table that you're creating. And we have quite a few textures going on. We have kind of the softness of the moss. We've got these kind of interesting sculptural sticks and this kind of chunky magnolia. So I think what we're gonna do is add some softness with some white pine and add some pine cones. And I'm also very curious about this really pretty oak. Just seeing if we can, you know, it's kind of neat because it brings together a little bit of autumn into, into your centerpiece. It's kind of the transition from autumn to winter. What's very beautiful about this is it's kind of naturally gold, which we'll be using a little bit of gold in our place settings. And you can just lay it. Like I said, some can be laid, laid down. Sometimes it's nice to have some things coming off the edge of the table too. It makes it look a little more natural. Love it. Okay, next we'll add the softness of the white pine. This is just really soft and beautiful. And I'm gonna kind of put that in at the base of the pin frog. Just gonna weave a little bit of this in for some wispiness. And I don't, I don't know, it's hard for me to explain the method that I'm using for this, but just try not to overthink it. <laughs> and I think you'll be fine. Just, you know, when I'm creating my designs, I think about the way it looks in nature. And I'm super inspired by nature. That's my number one inspiration. So I think about the way things grow and how they would look in nature. Okay, the nice thing about doing this over top of the moss too is the moss does make a little bit of a mess, which is fine. Um, so this kind of does the job of covering it up without you having to clean the table. Okay, the last thing we're going to add to our runner are pine cones. And I mean, geez, look at this. I was driving along and just couldn't resist. I'm always looking for little treasures like this. And it wasn't anybody's yard, I promise. I really enjoy working without gloves, but when you're working with pine cones, you're going to want to use gloves. And what, what I love about these, so they kind of have a natural flocking, which is actually sap. <laughs> so it's super sticky. So just make sure that you um, wear gloves. You know, you're probably not gonna wanna have sap all over your hands. And again, I'm just nestling these kind of in and out. I don't even mind that some of the needles on there look old. Oh, they're falling off, that's perfect. And clustering some together is really nice because again, look how they grow in nature, clustered. So we're just gonna stick a few pine cones in here with their natural flocking. And I try to step back and kind of see, well, where where is it looking like I might need some pine cones? I think I'd like to see a couple peek out under here. That would be really pretty. A little element of a surprise for your guests. Okay, we're gonna start on the place setting and I 100% recommend wearing gloves because I just washed my hands and they're really sticky. <laughs> so these are some festive and fun placemats that I bought this morning very inexpensively and I am going to be using those kind of as chargers. When you do a runner like this, you're gonna to have to probably do a little shifting to accommodate everything. 
I thought these were really pretty just because they're simple. And you know, next time I could have put these on first. I just didn't want to get a bunch of moss and everything on them. So I'm just gonna kind of scoot them under a little bit. And I like to kind of make sure that they're lined up on both sides. I don't worry about symmetry with the flowers or the centerpiece, but I do work, think about symmetry with the table settings. So next we have these really simple white plates that I'll be using. And I'm just going to place those in the center of the placemat, which again, we're kind of using doubly as a charger and a placemat. And it's okay if some of the centerpiece butts up against your table setting. I think it makes it feel a little more cozy, honestly. All right, what are we, oh yeah, these are fun. There are several different ways to do your table setting. I'm gonna place these on the outside of the plate and the spoon on the top. However you wanna do it. I know there are table setting rules, but it is 2021, so. <laughs> Do what you want. That's not gonna work. I don't mind seeing some of that pin frog either. So now that we have our silverware on the table, we will add our glasses. So we have these cute little tumblers for wine because it's the holidays and that's what we're going to be drinking. So our table settings are in place and the last thing I'm going to add are the name tags and napkins. And then we're going to light everything and pour the wine. <laughs> so this morning I came to the studio, I do have quite a few napkins, but I didn't have the exact color that I was looking for to go with our woodland theme. But I did have this green fabric, so I made my own napkins this morning. And we also have these dried orange slices that we've been making for wreaths, which are very easy to make in your oven, you can do this at home, and it smells wonderful. And I had some velvet ribbon, and so I've made our own little napkins this morning for our table setting. Whoops. So I'm just gonna place the napkin, and I'm putting the little orange slice right in the middle. So I literally had this fabric in the back and needed some napkins, so I'm just gonna show you what I did. It's so easy. And you could make your own napkins. I don't, if you can sew, you can put a hem on them. If not, don't even worry about it because they're still cute without a hem. And I just tie this velvet ribbon around one time. They're a little rustic, but that's okay because that's the look we're going for here. And I'm gonna lay it in the middle and put my orange slice on top of it. And voila. The last thing we're going to add are the name tags, which these were handcrafted um, locally. We're gonna fill the cups for this festive occasion. Okay, I'm only doing these front two because <laughs> somebody has to drink the wine. We're gonna flip the lights, light the candles, and then you'll see what we've created today. So this was a really simple look that we created today that is very doable. Um, obviously you can do any sort of modified version of this, but these are all items that are completely accessible to you guys. I feel like I need to have some people over, but I am going to give everybody a cheers on creating this beautiful holiday centerpiece that's very simple and doable at your home. So excited that you joined us and I look forward to seeing you again at Pass the